Hi, welcome to Z-Labs, a wholly owned subsidiary of Creative Technology. I'm hoping to take you on an incredible journey of discovery on what we at Z-Labs believe will be the future of computing. What we just saw a moment ago was a short video on the impact stem cell research has had on our lives. Stem cells are cells found in all of us. During embryonic development, the stem cells divide and specialize to form all the structures within the body. They are truly the building blocks of life. We live in exciting times where breakthroughs in stem cell research have given mankind the potential to fix the maladies and diseases that have plagued the human body since the dawn of time. Stem cell research is undoubtedly a controversial subject, however the potential it has to grow and replace organs in the body that are irreparably damaged or disease ravaged will continue to spur scientists on. Mother Nature has been honing the stem cell for over a billion years of evolution to produce the perfect building block of life. What we have done at Z-Labs is to take the concepts learned from nature and apply them to computing. All the benefits, none of the controversy. So, all exciting stuff, but you must be asking yourself, what's Z? Z, ladies and gentlemen, Z is a supercomputer in a nano size. Supercomputers today are more often than not vanity projects designed either to put countries or organizations on the map through technological one-upmanship or perform lofty scientific exploration. Either way, they have almost zero everyday real-life relevance to you and me. In fact, it is rumored that the fastest supercomputer on the planet today is actually deployed at calculating the rate of decay of the country's nuclear arsenal. Z, on the other hand, will bring the concept of supercomputing right into our daily lives. The architecture is designed to be good at processing tasks important to you and me. I'm afraid if you want to work out the decay rate of your nuclear arsenal, you better look elsewhere. For the rest of us, Z is the way to go. This focus on processing what really matters in the real world brings us tremendous benefits. Compared to a current, big and unwieldy supercomputer, the target for Z is to achieve 100th the cost, 100th the size, 100 times greener. So how do we achieve these magical numbers? Through the revolutionary breakthrough of stem cell computing. Building on the concept of stem cells, we have created programmable PEs, or processing elements. These work very much like a stem cell, as we shall see later. But first, let's take a look at four incredible qualities of stem cell computing and what they can do for you and me. Number one, stem cell computing gives you the power of flexibility. Within the chip, we can define the function of the PEs by configuring them. They can be configured thousands of times a second if needed, effectively morphing on the fly into whatever function is needed. Stem cell computing overcomes the limitations found in conventional processors. Conventional chips have dedicated fixed, not flexible, silicon blocks. Each dedicated fixed silicon block in a conventional processor is pre-allocated to a particular function, 3D acceleration, video processing, audio processing, etc. These hardware resources are permanently fixed and cannot be changed without the hassle of redesigning the entire chip. The chip designer effectively decides what functionality and performance will be supported. On the other hand, the Z chip, the ZMS chip, uses programmable PEs to optimize functionality. In other words, the Z chip is flexible with dynamic and configurable PEs, each group of PEs having the possibility of morphing into a different function. Instead of the chip designer dictating what functions and performance will be supported, it is left up to the device manufacturer or even the end user. Now you are beginning to understand the true power of stem cell computing. This means that we now have the incredible flexibility of transforming the chip into the best tool for the job every time. You will notice that what takes months for nature to achieve with stem cells, we can do in milliseconds. Moreover, nature only develops an organism once. We can change it constantly. The power of flexibility can be demonstrated in the following examples. We have placed two screens up here. One screen on the left uses the conventional processor, while the other on the right uses the ZMS. For the first simulation, we will demonstrate the amount of processing power it takes to process a low-resolution video. You will notice that in a conventional processor, only a relatively small fixed block of the entire processor chip is dedicated to video. The ZMS chip with stem cell computing technology, meanwhile, is using only a fraction of the available PEs to get this job done. 
For a medium resolution video, more processing power is demanded from the conventional processor, pretty much all of it as it happens, because this is as much as the chip designer put in. The ZMS, by contrast, is just cruising along. Let's move on to a high resolution video. This is where things get a little hairy for the conventional chipset. It begins to reproduce spasmodic images. It's maxed out. Take a look at the ZMS chip. It's powerful enough to get the job done effortlessly. That's due to the huge processing power of the chip. We're not even using full capacity yet. The second incredible quality of stem cell computing and what it can do for you and me is the power of energy efficiency. Due to the compute power of each processing element in the chip, the device is able to do an immense amount of processing in far less time and with far less energy than taken by a standard processor. This in turn translates into using drastically less power to accomplish tasks. We're talking here about a quantum leap in processing power for a chip of the same size. This can be demonstrated by the following examples. On the left is the conventional chipset, and on the right again is the ZMS. The first simulation shows the amount of power needed for image browsing. You will notice that a conventional chipset requires a whole lot more physical space and a whole lot more power to do a whole lot less, unlike the device powered by Z. What's more, the Z chip is intelligent enough to shut down unused PEs and wake them up as and when the need arises, thereby saving even more power. The next simulation shows what happens in powering a more compute-intensive activity like 3D gaming. You will notice that the conventional chipset, due to its inferior processing efficiency, is using a whole lot more power to support the activity, while ZMS, operating at moderate capacity, is able to support the same activity with much less electrical power. And just like before, things get really bad for a conventional chipset with high-definition videos. These devices become huge energy guzzlers. The ZMS, on the other hand, is able to scale up to support HD videos effortlessly with an incredibly high energy efficiency. Let's move on to the next incredible quality, the power of scalability. What do we mean by scalability? Just like stem cells, the basic building block for a ZMS chip is a processing element, PE. We will now show you how we can scale up or build an incredibly powerful computer when we chain PEs together to form larger and larger structures. This ability is at the heart of the ZMS architecture. Let's take a look at how this happens. As I mentioned, the basic building block of a ZMS chip is a PE. One chip consists of 24 PEs. For your information, one chip equates to 10 gigaflops of processing power. We can fit 256 chips onto a bigger board called a blade. One blade equals to over two teraflops of processing power. Wow! We can in turn fit 16 blades into a chassis. A standard computer rack measuring about 8 feet tall by 1.5 feet wide would in turn be able to house six chassis. And with just six of these racks, we would have an astounding over a petaflop of processing power. This would put us on par with a state-of-the-art supercomputer. But here's the catch. We would only occupy a fraction of the physical space needed. Can anyone guess how much space an existing state-of-the-art supercomputer takes up as opposed to our six racks? The number does begin with six. It's 6,000 square feet. If we were to take up the same amount of space as the current supercomputer, we would actually be 100 times more powerful. In other words, we would be 100 times smaller and 100 times greener and a hundred times less costly. This would be hypercomputing. These are our magic numbers. But remember, there is, as always, a catch. It would only be good at the things you cared about.